For more than 50 years, NASA has been putting humans into space with the help of thousands of people at centers all across the United States. As NASA prepares to build its next rocket, the Space Launch System, Spaceflight Insider takes a look at the preparations being made to launch SLS at the Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I've work, been working out here for Boeing for five years, been on site for 34 years, uh, having worked on the external tank program, came out here in March of 1981. I was actually out here and got to watch the first rollout for the first white tank that, uh, that went out in April of 81. I grew up in New Orleans and then I went to LSU for school. And um, after that, I ended up interning with Boeing uh, in Philadelphia. And I went and worked there full time for about three years. And then from there, I got the opportunity to come down when Boeing got the contract with NASA. Uh, I got to come down and uh, start helping build this big rocket. SLS isn't the only big rocket that's been built in part at the Michoud Assembly Facility. In fact, Gary is looking to continue the legacy of his father, who helped NASA design some of their greatest rockets at Michoud. Well, my dad was working out here at the time, and uh, he was in um, a tooling liaison and then also working in tool planning. And he said, you know, it'd be a, you know, a good place for me to get started. So I applied for it, and he kind of helped to... Uh, you know, he knew a lot of tooling guys because he was an old tooling guy himself. So I, that's how I got started in the tooling department. And with at that time, it was uh, Martin Marietta before Lockheed and Martin Marietta had merged. He had actually worked on the Saturn V program as a tooling guy. He'd been kind of part of the space family for since 1962. And I even had, my daughter was out here at one time in the external tank program as an x-ray technician. So I've had, there's been three of us Burnettes that have been able, here on site that have worked in the space program. My first job was at the Vertical Weld Center. So we worked on that, I was part of the activation team that worked on the, took it from when the tools turned over from the supplier to we're building hardware and we're producing flight hardware. So we actually, I got to help integrate all of our different tooling our um, production, our support tooling, right, to lift all the stuff and put it in, um, stage the stuff. Got to, let's see, we had our schedule, our times, our consumables, and making sure all of that was integrated and there at the right time, and identified just that we were going to have it. All of your, all of the, all the hardware that, you know, you see the, the different articles and pieces of, you know, all your, your barrel sections and your domes and, and everything that it takes are set up in what they call tooling jigs or tools. Some of them are weld jigs, some of them are trim jigs and stuff like that, or tools. And, you know, it's, a lot of people think of tools as hand tools, you know, hammer, you know, screwdriver, pair of pliers. But in, in this industry, your, your tools are, can be, for the Saturn program, is a 32-foot diameter. For ET, it was a 27-foot, and with the SLS, it's also a 27-foot diameter. So all your tools are on that kind of a scale, a 27 foot. Everything's, you know, all your, your major weld tools and, and uh, trim tools and that type of stuff are all of that scale. When you say, it, when you talk to me as saying tools, I'm thinking big tools, something, you know, size of this room. I think we're, especially the more and more hardware we build, the more and more it's, you know, we've got the hardware built, we're, we're gonna build this racket. And, uh, it's gonna launch, it's I think it's exciting. I'm excited every day when I come to work. And I know when we bring new hires in, it's our tour, you know, it's like, oh, we really, this is real, we're building it, we're building it right here. Watching it right now, it, it's, it's a lot more uh, exciting because we've got a lot, you know, because there for the first couple, three years, you know, it was watching the old ET tools get ripped out and the place went bare. And now then that we're seeing a lot more of the SLS tools coming up and coming online, producing hardware, domes and barrels and, and that type of stuff. And then watching as, it, as it's starting to repopulate. So it's like, wow, we're growing again. And the overall atmosphere is, is it, it's a positive thing. It's like, hey, watching, you know, when I first came into the ET program, it's like a lot of stuff was already established. They knew what they were doing, they were going about it. And my department was like one of the biggest that was out here tooling. Here, it's, it's not, that, not that way. Tooling doesn't have the, the presence that we had back those days. 
but now then it's seeing all the tools come in. You got your vendors coming in, they're setting tools, and then watching it as the, you know, it's like the challenge is, hey, now then the real work starts. They've got the tools in, now we got to make them work to give us the hardware that we can, because it isn't just, it isn't like an aircraft where you assemble. We have to fabricate it before we can ever assemble. So you have all of those challenges that you come into, these tools, when you set them up, it's like you've now begun the real work of trying to put this all together. But it's, it's really been neat to, to watch that, see the challenges, and it just like makes me scratch my head and appreciate the old guys, you know, from Saturn days and the early ET. Man, did they go through all this kind of struggles and, and trials and stuff? Is this the kind of things that they had to, you know, because you, you come in and, oh, wow, that didn't fit. And it's like, oh wow, what are we gonna do to, to make it work? And you know, those type challenges, it's like, gotta make it work.